Hey, how's it going? Uh, I've got a pretty big update to the VR mocap system that's going to be quite foundational to how things work moving forward. It's all based on the IK retargeting system in Unreal 5, which is incredibly powerful and really, really cool. But before we get into how that works, I just want to make a quick announcement that there's going to be a short film coming up on the channel. I can't release it yet, but uh, basically for Run and Gun Vancouver 2022, we did another 48 hour film which means everything, scripts, uh, all the way to finished film, done in 48 hours, which I can't believe we've done two of these in Unreal Engine. Uh, and uh, if you want to actually know kind of more of the process of how I use the system and how we get things so fast, I did a great talk with Offworld Live. I'm going to link that in the description so you can check that out. Uh, so you can kind of see how I use the system. And uh, yeah, we came up with a really cool Craigslist deal gone wrong starring a giant rat. Uh, but anyways, let's get on to the features. Here we are as this rat. Um, it's enjoyable every time. Um, and you'll probably notice this really cool bouncing waveform or this um, kind of um, audio uh, decibel kind of meter I have on the side here. And so we can actually use that to do something kind of cool. Um, because this actor doesn't have like blend shapes, but he does have a jawbone, we can click on this button, audio mouth movements on. Testing one, two, three. Hey, there it is. So you can see it's reading that uh, microphone capture and basically animating the mouth to move. So uh, how you would set that up, let me just stop this really quickly. Let's look at the, uh, the rat. You have to duplicate one of my animation blueprints and just because the bone names might not be the same. Um, but let's actually take a look at uh, Let's see, the duplicate animation blueprint that I made um, based on the mannequin, because basically the bones and the hierarchy are the same on this rat creature as the UE4 mannequin. You've got this choice between iPhone motion or the audio based mouth movements. And this is something that you can, yeah, you can flip on using this little button here. Um, otherwise, inside the, there's a bool on here, audio based mouth movements. The thing to keep note of, though, is it's neither or thing. Like it'll, it's just a bool. It'll change. You either get the blend shapes, um, or you'll get the mouth movements, and you'll have to modify which bone is being controlled. Um, so here you can see, I've set that uh, the audio amplitude. The louder it gets, the more it's going to use this rotation. So say if your mouth had a different rotation that it needs, you'd set that also here. Um, you can even do translation so the jaw could go up and down, which is uh, which would be wacky. Never do that. Um, I want you to do that. You know, actually talking about the uh, live link face stuff, that's actually a pretty good segue into something else that I've been working on for the system. So you'll notice that when you're working with the live link face, you've got this retargeting asset here. And that's basically if your blend shapes don't match the name of what uh, the AR kit ones are, that's where you change that information. So I have a lot of like little interesting things that I've been adding to the system that might not be kind of um, really good features that are showcaseable. But um, for instance, under remapping, I've been working on this uh, this here. So this is an AR kit remapping asset that kind of groups things based on where they are on the on the face. So this is all the stuff that has to do with the brow, eyes, um, etc. So it's kind of nice and organized so you can make your own. You just duplicate this one and make your own remapping asset. So there's just like a lot of little things like that in the system um, that you can make use of. For instance, one of the things that's not quite ready yet uh, that I'm working on is this AR kit smoothing component, which will basically look at, um, you know, it'll evaluate the live link frame. You get the, the morph target name, and then you can do some weighted smoothing averages to it, make it a little bit smoother. I've got this macro I'm working on that'll look at like how much snappiness do you want versus like how much overall smoothing do you want and try to reconcile those two. I haven't figured out that formula yet, but um, if someone else has any ideas on that, that'd be awesome uh, to let me know. So yeah, the system just has a ton of different things that might be useful. I'd recommend just looking around in, in some, some of these, um, for instance, like the camera shakes. This is a cool thing. I forgot that I added this in there, but this is like a little handheld thing that you could add onto your cameras. Um, so anytime I think of a filmmaking tool that I need in Unreal Engine, I pretty much put it in the system. Assets, that's kind of where I hold most of the, you know, textures, models, things of that nature. For instance, um, got this new VRM skeleton and that actually takes us to 
one of the new things that we're going to be looking at, which is the IK retargeting features. One of the incredible features of Unreal 5, and there's just so many incredible features, is the IK retargeting system. And now I'm not an expert in this system, but I do know a little bit about it. And I know that this is definitely the future for all the VR mocap stuff. Um, I've made this new character, which you can see here. This is the Manny face model, which is based on the new UE5 mannequin, but with a few special bones. You've got eye bones, um, you've got jaw bones, as well as all the AR kit blend shapes. So my idea is if your actor isn't ready to record on yet, you could record on this intermediate actor and then transfer your data and have as much useful like different data types as you, as you uh, can basically get. So regardless, this is an IK retargeting asset and you want to make one of these per skeleton. So inside of here, what you want to do is you want to make a new solver, full body IK, which you can see I have here. It'll ask you what the first bone is. You'll want to do the first skinned bone, which is typically the pelvis. Um, and then you just set up these chains. So you have a chain name, which you want to have this exact naming convention. This is the same naming convention as the starter uh, content. So you have the start bone where it starts and the end bone. And you're going to want to have the equivalent on your model, on your skeleton, uh, including these IK goals. And to make the IK goals, very simple. You just right click new goal and uh, it already has one on there. So it's just going to use this one, but you can see what that does. I have a few different presets here. For instance, here's the character creator three one, all the same stuff. And so here we've got the new VRM skeleton that I've included in the system. So once you make these IK rigs for your characters, then you can do something really cool with this IK retargeter. And so for instance, here's the mannequin face, which has a previously recorded take I've done with the character that I'm retargeting onto this VRM character which is really, really cool, right? But what's amazing about this is you don't have to just do this after you've recorded animations. You can do this at runtime. And that's what the new IK retargeting character mode is in the VR mocap system. Okay, so we have the IK rig, which I would recommend you set up for your important characters because you can transfer animations back and forth, uh, all sorts of cool stuff with that. But once you have that, how do you get that to work with the VR mocap system? Well, let's take a look at that right now. So I'm going to go into the VR mocap folder. Let's look at animation blueprints. And we've got this IK retarget animation blueprint. Let's take a look at it really quickly before we continue further. So we've got uh, the base. It looks very much like the other animation blueprints, except for on the animation graph. You can see it's pretty simple. Uh, it doesn't have any of the other control rig stuff. All it has is this retarget pose from mesh, which means we're going to be taking animations from another skeletal mesh and putting them onto our actor using the retargeting system. Pretty neat. So you can see that this uh, takes this here, this IK retargeting asset. And that's what we were looking at prior when we were previewing the animations. So we have to make that for our characters. So if we just go into components, IK rigs. You can see I've got quite a few set up already. In fact, I already have a UE5 Manny to VRM. If you just open that up, you can see the source rig is our Manny face. That's what the IK rig system will be using, this Manny face, which is the UE5 mannequin with the blend shapes and the eye rotation and jaw. I did this one because you could be retargeting to a character that has a jaw and eye movements and you want to actually transfer that over to the other skeleton. So again, if you're going to be doing something like that, let's actually open up the Manny face. I do have left eye, right eye, jaw. So you're going to want to make sure that those chains correspond in your IK rig. But anyways, what we need to do is we need to retarget this asset, this animation blueprint to match our skeleton. Because if you look at this right now, this is UE4 mannequin. That's old news. We're in UE5. We're using UE5, not UE4. Although I imagine I'll be using UE4 Mannequin forever. But anyways, Manny to VRM. The, I think in this instance, the target skeletal mesh is more important than the source skeleton. Even though the source skeleton looks garbage, the difference why it's a crumpled up is because um, this asset says UE5 Manny to... Well, sure, I'll, I'll show you. If we want to do this like properly, I guess, it, it doesn't really matter that much, uh, I found. But what we can do is go animation, IK retargeter. We're going to say UE4 mannequin is the source. That's where the information is coming from. And it's going to VRM, something like that. Then we just go VRM. There it is. And well, actually, maybe it's, it is good that we're doing this. We can actually edit the pose to make sure that like the pose matches. 
There's something kind of weird with the hands and that before. Yeah. This system is so great. I, I really like it. They could have made this any easier, honestly. We can actually, once we're done editing the pose, you can see what UE4 Manic and uh, animations look like on this. But yeah, looks good to me. Just gonna save that. Okay, so back to our animation blueprint. We're gonna right click, retarget animation asset, duplicate using that new UE4 to VRM that we just set up, this one here. Press retarget. And there it creates an animation blueprint for us. I'm just gonna drop that into the folder with our, our character, just to, for organization purposes. And let's open it up. So you can see we're having a compile error. And the cool thing about debugging in UE5 uh, is you just click on this and I'll tell you where it's having a, a problem, like with a little warning sign, so sick. And here's how you fix problems in UE5. You just delete them and uh, out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, basically, that node was referencing a bone that's not on our character. I just got rid of it. And, uh, you know, instead of blending between that audio based mouth movements that we saw earlier and the iPhone, it's just going to use iPhone only. I don't even know if there is a job on this character. So, anyways, what we need to do now is make uh, an actor that we can mocap now. So, I'm just going to go into here and making an actor for the VR mocap system, very easy. Um, just made a new actor. Let's call it. VRM BP. Okay, so we're just gonna drop in our skeletal mesh, rotate it negative 90, so it's facing in the X direction. So if you look at the this here, X is forward on the character. Now while this the skeletal mesh is selected, we want to highlight this new animation blueprint that we created and hit this little arrow. And that'll basically populate that field with whatever we have highlighted in the content browser. So that's looking good to me. Um, one more thing that we have to do after we retarget this, we have to make sure that this retarget pose from mesh is using the right IK retargeter. Now we're gonna be using the UE Manny, uh, UE5 Manny to VRM. Um, so yeah, again, if you wanna make your own, you can just, well, we can even do, do it here. Animation IK retargeter. Um, I would say UE Manny Face is the is a good source because that's the one that you kind of spawn into when you use the IK retargeting system. And then you just choose whatever skeleton, I don't know, like say metahuman, sure. But we're doing VRM. That's just like, again, in case you're setting up your own thing. Um, and then, yeah, again, you just put it into here. Let's compile and save. Everything looks good to me. That's great. Um, so there's one more component we need to add to the actor, which is the mocap actor component. And this is what tells the system uh, if it's the mocap target, which we're just gonna make it the mocap target right away. Um, and we're also gonna choose the IK retarget. That is the new kind of actor profile that we're gonna be using. And it's got some very special properties, lots of branching that happens in the player pond to make it do something very special when we launch into the actor. So let's actually take a look at that special property right now. Okay, so we're just gonna drag in the new actor we created. You can see it has all those components we've set up prior, but what happens when we press play is very interesting. You can see they transform, uh, only not really, they're just hidden and it spawns in the UE5 Manny face, which has you know eye movements and jaw movements, which you can retarget to a character if it has eye movements and jaw movements. So anyways, it uh, looks like even though I'm in the floor, I think we can still set up a semi-decent calibration. But what happens once we calibrate is it hides that actor and then spawns in this character again. And now we're actually getting the information from the prior actor. But you can see it's a little, I mean, the motion's okay. It's a little bit wonky though. Now, how can we make that better? Now that comes down to really refining the, let's open up this. Under components, IK rigs. This um, IK solver is very important for the look of your character when it's moving around. And if you open up this, uh, let's open up the Manny for kind of comparison. This is the one that was done by Epic. You can see that they have different settings for the bones. So we can do the same thing for our character. Let's click on this. 
you have to actually make sure you're uh, highlighting the solver. But then you can say add settings to bone. And uh, let's see what kind of settings we can do. Just click on this. We can make the, the pelvis and like the, the spine stiffer because the, the, if it doesn't have like a stiff spine, that's where it's going to get a lot of weird folding and stuff like that. So I'm just going to do the same thing here. Click on the settings to uh, set some rotation stiffness. Let's do the same thing. But you'll notice, yeah, we can also set up limits. We can make it so that it you know, only bends a certain amount in one direction. I might have to do that for the clavs. Actually, the clavs were looking pretty gnarly, weren't they? Let's go to the shoulders. Same thing. Add uh, settings on the selected bone. Let's go maybe 0.7 because the clavs can move quite a bit. But we, we want it to get most of its motion in the arms rather than the clav. So there we go. Uh, let's line up again. So it's looking a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, I think I still probably have to work out some stuff on the clavs. <laughs> the elbow also pops in backwards. That would be a situation where you'd want to put in some rotation limits. But pretty neat, pretty powerful stuff. It's even getting finger movements. So that's how you use the system. And I want to test out to see, I was setting up another character earlier. Let's see if it works. I think I've got a raccoon in here. I hope this works. Oh my God, look at me go! <laughs> so there you have it. The IK retargeting is extremely powerful and essentially the better the solver gets on just one skeleton. So instead of me having to focus on like upgrading system for like right now, I think it's seven skeletons that I'm supporting or some, some ridiculous number. I can focus on one skeleton make that IK solver better, and then anything uh, that's basically retargeted to that is going to work. Um, and also, one of the problems with the system prior was, I uh, again, I couldn't author animations that would work for each skeleton, because also skeletons change in shape and size and all sorts of stuff. So I was animating the trackers on someone's body. But now I could actually author animations for the walk cycles. So for the movement actor, Say we just use the, um, I can set up a really nice blend space for just that one actor, and then all the characters will get that blend space using the IK retargeting. So just, it solves a lot of problems and essentially makes it so you can use any skeleton with the system. So play around with that. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, again, what we're doing is we're setting up the IK rig for each skeleton. We're using the IK retargeter to take it from the UE Manny face over to your skeleton, setting up the animation blueprint to use that retargeting asset. And uh, on the mocap actor, you're selecting IK retarget. That's the new kind of profile for that method. Um, but pretty neat. Uh, and actually, I'm probably going to look into some kind of multiplayer system using that. But that's like my pipe dream is to get this um, up, work, up and working networking. Um, and I think I could do it. I think that these tools that UE5 has given us uh, really allow for that. But we're now done on the features. Let's take a look at um, some other ones. And actually, I really like this new one. So let's just say you've used the system to record some animations and you want to update some hand animation. And I can tell you, I hate animating hands, but I made a really cool control rig that makes it a lot more fun. So uh, let's just add in, if you select a skeletal mesh, let's go add in a control rig. And I'm going to choose the hand rig here. And you can see that spawns in these things here. And what's really fun about this is I made it so that this is more compressed, like the fingers are tighter together. This is more spread apart. And this is like fingers out, fingers in. So you can kind of have global controls, but say, say if we want to make a fist, but then they're pointing. Boop, you got like individual finger controls. So also the thumb as well. So this is really, really neat. But uh, beyond that, we can even go poses. And if you navigate to the VR mocap folder, I've set up a bunch of, I think it's under assets, yeah, poses. Uh, let's see, let's choose this grip one here. Okay, so what you have to do is you, um, you can see in my control rig, I have the L 
uh, before the different controls. So that's what we want. L underscore shows it which side is which. If we click mirror, click on this, select the controls, we can paste the pose in. Bam, there it is. So the last updates have to do with the iPhone only mode, which I think is a really great way to VTube. I mean, full body is really nice, but I find most of the time I'm just at my desk, I'm with my mic. Uh, it's easiest and I think best, for me at least, to do just iPhone only. But anyways, let's take a look at that. I'm just gonna find a character here. Let's use one of the ones that we used from, uh, yeah. Let's use this guy. <laughs> he looks pretty cool. Um, so on my player pawn, I've got iPhone only mode checked on and VTuber mode checked on. Let's see what happens here. All right. So I think that he's not set up to be, you notice if I press play, the ring didn't snap to him. That means he's not set up to be the active mocap target. So if we just click on this, there we go. Active mocap target. Bam. There he is. Hello. Um, so this is my natural position, but you can see that's way tilted. That's, that's way off. So what we can do is adjust the rotation like this. So that's a little bit better, right? So yeah, all this stuff uh, works pretty much in tandem. Um, there might be some small incompatibilities. I don't know, test it out, play around with it. Um, let me know what you think. Um, again, yeah, the big things I'm working towards on the system, making the IK retargeting better, maybe making a whole new system that's multiplayer oriented that's all about the IK retargeting uh, that uses full body or say iPhone only so that you can basically drive a character in, I don't know, shared experience with other people, uh, what, chat, what have you. Yeah, I mean, I think that I'm kind of hitting a wall a bit with um, the Vive trackers tend to fail when you have too many of them in one room. So that's why I'm looking at networking so that maybe I can have two different VR setups so that actors can act together. But of course, there's a lot of data to kind of transfer um, back and forth over the internet, particularly with the AR kit, the iPhone. So if anyone has any ideas for that, like how I can compress that uh, iPhone data down, let me know. Because actually I could reduce this system that I have to just the tracked points, the six off movement through the VR space. Anyways, things I'm thinking about um, could be, it might be a while until I do the next update, but uh, stay tuned for the feature, well, not feature, but like the, the short presentation, uh, the 48 hour film that's coming next week. That's gonna be really, really fun. Uh, it's, a, it's a very out there film and I hope that people like it. Um, I think it's very funny, but uh, I'm also very damaged. Anyways, take care everyone.